Ladies and gentlemen, AMD has done it. We finally have competition once again. I have with me all three Ryzen CPUs, the 1800X, 1700X, and the 1700. But in this video, we're gonna be comparing the 1800X and the 1700X against their direct competition, the i7 6900K and the 6800K. In a later video, I will be comparing the 1700 against the 7700K, so be sure to stick around for that as well. So the new Ryzen 7 CPUs are all eight core, 16 thread processors, and here are their respective prices and TDP. The most notable being the 1700, which has the lowest TDP in any eight core processor in the market. Very impressive numbers on paper to say the least. $500 for an eight core processor is unheard of, but is it too good to be true? We're gonna take a look at performance per dollar as always at the end of this video, so make sure to stick around. Now obviously there's a lot of exciting stuff with AMD's new processors and there is just too much to cover in this video which is why I'm holding it off for a separate video because I know a lot of you guys are here for the benchmarks only. I have two test beds set up for this comparison, one for AMD which features the new MSI X370 X Gaming Titanium motherboard, 16 gigs of RAM from Crucial clocked at 2400 MHz, the Be Quiet Silent Loop cooler and an EVGA GTX 1080 for the Win graphics card. While the Intel test bed features the ASUS Strix X99 gaming motherboard, the same 16 gigs of RAM from Crucial, the same EVGA GTX 1080 FTW card, 1200 watt power supply and the 110i cooler both from Corsair. It's also important to note that all the drivers are up to date and I'm using the latest BIOS update that was sent to me from AMD. I'll also be sure to follow up with these numbers as new drivers become available and bugs get fixed. So I'll be showing the benchmarks from the stock frequencies as well as overclocked. I managed to push the 1800X to 4GHz and the 1700X to 3.9, which I'm still not proud of. I kind of expected more headroom on these new processors considering I was able to achieve an extra 1.2GHz on the 6900K. The first test was Cinebench. The 1800X scored a little higher on stock frequencies, but after overclocking, the 6900K shot up to 1800, which was surprising. Then we got the 6800K down there, which is to be expected since it's only a six core processor. It can't quite hang with the big boys yet. Next up, we have Handbrake, which is an open source video transcoder. So I transcoded a 60 second raw 4K video file using the H.264 codec, and here are the render times. Lower obviously being faster, both the 18 and 17 processors beating out the 6900K on stock frequencies, while the overclocked 6900K takes the lead once again in render times. Similar numbers for the Vegas Pro editing program, rendering out a 60 second raw 4K file was faster on the 6900K once overclocked, but not by much. It appears that both the 1800X and the 1700X processors are faster than the 6900K when it comes to multi-threaded applications on stock frequencies, which is interesting. Once overclocked though, it's a different story. But how does it perform in gaming? So first up, we have Ashes of the Singularity. It appears both Intel CPUs performed better during the CPU focused benchmark for Ashes. We're looking at around 30% difference in speeds compared to the 6900K. Not a huge difference in Battlefield 1 since it's more of a GPU intensive game, but we can see that the 6900K is still in the lead by 4 FPS, followed closely by the 1800X. On Doom is where we start to see something interesting. Even the 6800K performed better than both Ryzen chips, despite it having two less physical cores. Granted, this was done in OpenGL instead of Vulkan, where AMD would have surely done better if the game didn't keep crashing on me. I would have given you guys scores on that as well, but OpenGL was the only stable option for me at the time. Forza 3 is the new game I added to my benchmarks to spice it up a bit, and we can see that the 6900K is about 17% faster than the 1800X in stock frequencies, while the 6800K and the 1800X are pretty much neck and neck. The gap in performance increases as we overclock both CPUs. Hitman Absolution. Same thing, only difference is the gap in performance is much higher. The 6900K is 24% faster in stock frequencies compared to the 1800X. Metro Last Light. Being more of a GPU intensive game, we can see similar numbers across all the CPUs except the 6900K. Once again, the CPU is clearly on steroids. And finally, we got GTA 5. Looks like the 1800X and 6800K are both neck and neck. The 1700X with slightly lower frames and the 6900K way up there with a 20 FPS gap. That's a 14% increase in performance. 
So before I share my opinion, let's take a look at the performance per dollar. As expected, the 6900K gives you the worst value out of the rest, with a 0.10 frames per dollar average compared to the 1800X's 17 frames per dollar, which is nearly double. Now even though it shows that the 6800K gives you the most value for your money, you have to keep in mind that these scores are only for the gaming benchmarks, and it doesn't take into account the rendering speeds where the 6800K does poorly. The best bang for your buck CPU is the 1700X, followed by the 1800X when taking gaming and productivity into account. So conclusion time, based on the benchmarks in the video and the performance per dollar, it honestly doesn't make any sense to me why you wouldn't go with a Ryzen CPU for your next PC. In the end, you get a solid 8-core processor for only $500 or $400 with slightly lower clocks. The value is definitely there, whether you are gaming or using your PC for productivity or both. It just makes sense going with either the 1700X or the 1800X CPU. There is no question there. However, and there's always a however, if you're one of those elitists and extreme PC enthusiasts that wants the best for their PC no matter the cost, then obviously the 6900K is the better option. You just have to overpay for it. And by overpay, I mean paying double the price, which is ridiculous. If you want the best bang for your buck, Ryzen is the way to go. Either way, I'll drop a link to all the processors mentioned in the video down below. Make sure to hit that like button if you guys are excited for my other comparison or if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.